Okay, and thanks for the opportunity to present. I have nothing to disclose. So gastroesophageal reflux disease is very common, affecting up to 30% of the population. And we know that obesity is a known risk factor for GERD. With the increasing prevalence of obesity, it is expected that we'll be seeing more and more patients with both obesity and GERD. Laparoscopic Nissen fundification is the uh, standard surgical treatment for GERD and has been shown to be very safe and effective. Uh, there are, however, long or concerns about its durability in obese patients, specifically given increased recurrence rates. That's led to interest in laparoscopic Roux-en-Y gastric bypass as a surgical option for these patients. Currently, however, there is limited data directly comparing the two. We aim to compare the long-term outcomes of Nissen and gastric bypass in obese patients undergoing surgical treatment for GERD, and we hypothesize that Nissen would provide similar symptom control to Roux-en-Y gastric bypass. So this was a retrospective cohort study in which we studied obese patients with BMIs greater than 35 who underwent surgical intervention for GERD at The Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. Revisional surgeries were excluded. We had a total of 44 patients in the study with 24 in the Nissen group and 20 in the Roux-en-Y group. Data was obtained from an IRB-approved prospectively maintained database. In addition, pre- and post-operative GERD health-related quality of life and gastroesophageal reflux symptom severity scores were obtained via patient questionnaires. In the study, the majority of patients were female and Caucasian. Preoperative BMI was higher in the Roux-en-Y group, 43 versus 39, and age was higher in the Nissen group, 51 versus 42. Other baseline demographics were similar between groups. So all patients preoperatively were on PPIs, with most being on BID dosing. Concurrent rates of hiatal hernia, uh, esophagitis, and Barrett's esophagus were comparable. Our objective testing was comparable between groups, so median Demeester scores were 50 in the Nissen group, 45 in the Roux and Y group, and manometry results, quality of life scores, and symptom severity scores were also similar between groups. There were no conversions to open in either group in similar operative times. Uh, there were no short-term complications in the Nissen group and two in the Roux and Y group. However, this was not statistically significant. Rates of stricture requiring dilation were comparable. 12% of Nissen's and 20% of bypass patients required some sort of EGD with dilation. Median length of stay was one day shorter in the Nissen group, and uh, the marginal ulcer rate was 25% in our, our bypass group. Overall, long-term follow-up was completed in 75% of the Nissen patients and 60% of the bypass patients. However, the median long-term follow-up was longer in the Nissen group. The number of patients resuming PPIs post-operatively was similar between groups. Uh, revisional surgery was required in one of the Nissen patients and none of the Roux and Y patients. Uh, it was not statistically significant, though. Overall, patients were satisfied with the results of the procedure, with most saying that they would have the procedure again with the benefit of hindsight. At uh, long-term follow-up, there was a trend towards, here we go, uh, more improved quality of life and symptom severity scores in the Nissen group. However, this did not reach statistical significance. There was no differences in dysphagia between groups, and um, there was less significant bloating in the Nissen group. So at long-term follow-up on our within-group comparisons, uh, there was statistical significantly improvement in the symptom severity scores. So in the Nissen group, quality of life scores improved from 29 to 1.5, and um, symptom severity scores improved from 35 to 1. In the bypass group, quality of life scores went from 36 to 9, and the symptom severity scores went from 47 to 11. In conclusion, so this was at our long-term follow-up of more than two years, Nissen was found to be comparable to Roux and Y for control of GERD symptoms in obese patients. The operation led to a significant decrease in the use of antacid medications and resulted in high levels of patient satisfaction. So when con uh, considering which surgery you're gonna pick for these patients, you really have to take into consideration their overall health status and comorbidities, but based on our results, both Nissen and Roux and Y are effective in treating GERD symptoms in obese patients. Nissen can therefore be a potential option in patients that do not qualify or are not interested in bariatric surgery. 
There are several limitations to the study. For one, it is a retrospective cohort study and therefore the groups were not randomized. Uh, it's also a, a smaller sample size and so this could have led to a type two error. Additionally, proportion of patients were lost to follow up. Finally, the analysis and our primary outcomes were uh, primarily based on validated patient questionnaires rather than objective data. We don't routinely obtain objective pH testing postoperatively, so this data was not available for review. Some future areas of study are doing this in a larger cohort and obtaining objective postoperative uh, testing to see if there was any difference in pH testing postoperatively. Um, specifically, when we have a larger cohort to see if that trend towards more improvement in the uh, quality of life and symptom severity scores seen in the Nissen patients reaches statistical significance or not once you have a larger group. I will now take any questions.